This tutorial is all about food additives and there are a variety of food additives uh, not all of which are artificial food additives um, and also we'll look at two particular additives which are emulsifiers and baking powder. This shows some of the syllabus content we're going to cover here that which is in yellow is on the foundation paper only that which is white is foundation and higher level, therefore a little bit more difficult. You can see from this label of mayonnaise that there's a variety of ingredients, many of which you would expect in mayonnaise, but there are also, for example, thickeners and acid regulators, and these are the sorts of additives that you might get. But here we're going to concentrate on two of the ingredients in particular, and that's oil and water. Now oil and water, we all know, don't mix. Oil floats on water. So how is it that mayonnaise enables the oil and the water in the ingredients to mix together and not separate? Well, this is because they contain what's known as an emulsifier. And the emulsifier is found in the egg yolk and to a certain extent in the mustard ingredients. Mayonnaise contains what are called emulsifier molecules, which have got two distinct ends. One end, usually drawn as a ball on the exam papers, is the hydrophilic end, and it's this end that attracts to water molecules, or makes attractions to water molecules. The other end, usually shown as a zigzag part of the molecule, is known as the hydrophobic end. This end does not attract water, it attracts oil molecules instead. And in this way, the emulsifier molecule acts as a kind of bridge between the water and the oil. One end binds to water, one end binds to oil, and therefore it enables the oil and water to mix without separating from each other. So if you take a mixture of oil and water and you add an emulsifier and stir vigorously, you end up with what's known as an emulsion. An emulsion is a mixture of two liquids, where they don't separate from each other. Of course, the food industry uses many other additives. Additives might include food colorings, for example, in these sweets, preservatives to stop food from going off or to stop microbes from growing on or in the food, flavor enhancers, which give a slight tang to the food, antioxidants, these stop oxygen from reacting with the food and making it go off, particularly fats in the food and oils, which react with oxygen in the air and go rancid. Antibiotics, which again will kill microorganisms in the food and help it stay fresh for longer. Thickeners, these are things like gums, which allow the, for example, a pasta sauce to be thicker than just a runny liquid. Anti-caking agents are used in powders, for example, in coffee powders and so on, to stop the powder or the lumps from caking together. There are acidity regulators. These control the acidity in food. As microorganisms start to form in the food, often it will make the food more acidic and these reduce the acidity. And then there are flavorings like food colorings. These might be natural flavorings. However, they may not be natural to the particular food. For example, the food coloring, which is found in orange squash, often is derived from carrots. You could say that it's not an artificial colouring because it's not been made in a factory, however it isn't natural to orange squash. These are the main four food additives you need to know about. Emulsifiers which, as we've said before, stop oil and water from separating out, allow them to mix together, for example in mayonnaise or salad cream and these are found for example in egg yolk. There are food colours which give the food an improved colour and make it more attractive. For example, caramel is used in Coca-Cola to give it a nice brown colour. Antioxidants stop food, and that's especially fats, from reacting with oxygen and going off. And a typical antioxidant is vitamin C or ascorbic acid. And flavour enhancers improve the flavour of the food. For example, in Chinese food, monosodium glutamate might be added to give it an extra tang or kick. Now on to another additive. Here we see a loaf of bread and a piece of cake, but they rise in very different ways. 
Whereas the bread rises because of the action of a microorganism, yeast, and the enzymes within it, which produce bubbles of carbon dioxide in the dough, the cake mixture rises because of the addition of a particular ingredient, and that ingredient is baking powder or sodium hydrogen carbonate, which, when it's cooked, makes bubbles in the mixture, which, as the cake sets, set into the mixture and make these little air holes. You need to know how baking powder helps cakes rise and the test for carbon dioxide which is made when this substance is heated. You need to be able to know the word equation and also, given a little help in the question, the symbol equation for this particular reaction. You may have done this reaction in the lab, heating baking powder. Baking powder chemically is sodium hydrogen carbonate. If you clamp that above a hot Bunsen burner and heat it, then there is a decomposition that happens to the sodium hydrogen carbonate. It produces a gas which, when it's bubbled through lime water, makes the lime water go cloudy. That gas, therefore, is carbon dioxide. When doing this experiment, you often also notice some water vapour condensing in the cooler parts of the tube. And that's because water is another product of this reaction. We're left just as we started with a white powder, but the white powder that we're left with at the end isn't the original sodium hydrogen carbonate, no, because that one has decomposed and changed on heating. In fact, we end up with another white powder, sodium carbonate. The word equation for this reaction then is sodium hydrogen carbonate, not hydrocarbonate, but hydrogen carbonate, gives sodium carbonate plus carbon dioxide plus water. The formula for sodium hydrogen carbonate is NaHCO3. Sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. Carbon dioxide is CO2 and water is H2O. So in order to balance this equation, we count the number of particles on each side. We see that on the right hand side there are two sodiums, whereas on the left there's only one. So we need to put a 2 in front of the whole of the sodium hydrogen carbonate to give us two sodiums. This now gives us two hydrogens, and we've got two hydrogens on the other side, that's fine. We've also got two lots of carbon, and we've got one, two carbons here, and we've also got three times two is six oxygens. We've got three there and another two, and one makes six, so it now balances. Some questions. This question is about food additives. Look at the list. It shows the main types of food additives. Antioxidant, emulsifier, flavour enhancer, food colour. Which additive stops food from reacting with oxygen? That would be in the name, antioxidant. And which additive helps oil and water to mix and not separate out? That would be emulsifier. Write down one food that contains an emulsifier. Might go for mayonnaise. And monosodium glutamate is a flavor enhancer. It's added to potato crisps. Explain why it is to improve the flavor. And those are the answers. As you can see, there are a vast amount of allowable foods which contain emulsifiers for you to choose from. Some foods contain additives. A look at the table, it gives some information about E numbers. These are European Union numbers for particular additives. Look at the list of ingredients of a food. Okay, that's there in the box. What type of food additive is E160? Okay, E160. So we look in the table and we see that 160 falls within the 100 to 199 range. So that one must be a food colour. Next question says, which ingredient is there in the smallest amount? Well, Ingredients in foods are always listed by the amount by mass in the food and as wheat flour is the most abundant, that's first, so the least abundant will have the least amount, that's sodium 
carbonate. Sodium benzoate is a preservative, it has that formula. How many different elements are chemically joined in sodium benzoate? Well, each element has got its own symbol, and the symbol must have either a capital letter or a capital and a small letter. So all we need to do is count up the number of different capital letters or different symbols in there. We've got C, we've got H, we've got O, we've got NA. Therefore, it's got four different chemical elements joined together. Antioxidants stop food from going off. They stop the food from reacting with the gas in the air, which gas will anti is in the name again, antioxidant, so it's oxygen. Emulsifiers help oil and water to mix. Write down the name of a food that contains an emulsifier. Choose from the list. Here I reckon the only choice is mayonnaise. An additive is given an E number, look at the table, it gives some information about E numbers, look at the part of the food label found on a packet of cake mix, which ingredient is in the smallest amount, well this will be a last on the label, which is E104, and the type of additive that is E153, so we look on the table to find out where 153 would be, that would be in that section there, so it would be of food colour. Finally, one of the raising agents is sodium hydrogen carbonate. When sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated, it breaks down. It makes sodium carbonate water and carbon dioxide. Write down the word equation for the breakdown of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Well, it's kind of all in the question, really. It says that we start off with sodium hydrogen carbonate and we make three products. These are sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. 